you subscribe to Twitter TV yet? No, what are you waiting for? Welcome back to Critter Ed TV. As always, I'm Amelia, and this is my older sister, Sandra. Hey, Critter fans, thanks for clicking on our thumbnail. Our last two episodes were about the wildlife our family saw on our destination vacations. First, we learned about how delicate Maui's land ecosystems are and how dangerous invasive species can be to them. Then, we traveled to Puerto Penasco, Mexico to explore some of the best tide pools in the world. Brittle stars, hermit crabs, and sea anemones are just a fraction of the wonders you'll find there. Now we go back to Maui to venture underneath the blue waters and learn why the island is one of the world's premier diving and snorkeling destinations. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water and a lot of people are too scared to explore it. We're here to show you it's not as scary as you may think and why taking the plunge can be a life-changing experience. Hello Critter fans, I'm your host Jed Dodds and the dude standing next to me is Clint Elliott, the Jacques Cousteau of Critter at TV. Jacques Cousteau? Seriously? I mean, I'm sure all of you will agree that comparing me to Jacques Cousteau is absolutely, positively back guano crazy. Back guano, good. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, like we did there. It is a family show, after all. Of course. All. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I have explored some incredible oceans, including the one that Jacques Cousteau called the world's aquarium, the Sea of Cortez. And I've also explored Hawaii. There's no doubt that Hawaii is one of the premier destinations in the world to see ocean life, and Maui is probably one of the more popular islands to explore for tourists. Today we're going to take you on a journey on some of those popular and hidden places to explore. Jed, I know you and your family visited several of the most highly rated sites off of Maui, and I'm sure you started with the best one, right? So why don't we start with that footage? Yeah, it's a little complicated. Well, why is it complicated? I mean, you did all the research before you left as to what the best sites were, right? Yeah, like any good adventure destination, it's always good to do research ahead of time. And the internet said that Maluaka Beach is one of the top rated places for snorkeling. It's not that crowded and it has some great rock outcroppings where a ton of sea life lives. Oh, I love that beach. It has an incredible view of Molokini, which is known as one of the world's top rated snorkel and dive sites. The footage you got there must have been mind blowing. Yeah, not so much. Well, why is that? Well, there was an offshore current that was creating a lot of waves, which really churned up the water, which made the sediment really heavy and hard to see, and basically pushed visibility to zero. So we really didn't see any sea life, but the kids didn't have a lot of fun playing in the waves and getting wrecked by some gnarly ones. Ouch, that looks like it hurt. But Jed, you do know that gnarly is more of a SoCal thing, right? Okay, Clint, we get it. You lived in Hawaii. <laughs> Darn right I did. Here's a helpful tip for when your next adventure vacation includes fun in the water. It's always a good idea to talk to a local dive shop about current water conditions. While websites are helpful for planning your trip, it's always better to talk to a local who scouted the conditions when you're actually on your trip. So it looks like ours wasn't the only family affected by offshore weather. We weren't able to swim with sea lions and dolphins off Penasco because of a storm. Yeah, that's too bad because it's definitely what Penasco is known for. Luckily, Maui is an island, which means there's always a leeward side that's protected from an offshore storm. And after talking with the friendly folks at the local dive shop, we decided to make a short drive to the clear, calm waters of Honolulu Bay. Honolulu Bay is a hidden treasure with very few parking spots. So if you're going to go, make sure you go early to avoid the crowds and ensure that you get a spot. A short walk down a jungle path lined with majestic tropical trees and sacred burial grounds lead to a rocky shore that isn't ideal for sunbathing. But that doesn't matter because you're here for what lies below the surface. A fish we encountered was one of Hawaii's most unique fish, the trumpet fish, known locally as Nunu. It appears to float through the water, but its calm demeanor is just a ruse to draw smaller, unsuspecting fish closer. When in range, the trumpet fish darts forward, sucking up its victims in the vacuum of a suddenly expanding tubular snout. If you prefer a fish with no tricks up their sleeve, then the spotted boxfish is for you. One of the most docile of all reef dwellers, it spends its day hovering through the coral, feeding mostly on sponges and algae. And if carnivores fascinate you, few on earth are more misunderstood than moray eels. Feared by some to be aggressive biters, experienced divers know a different side of them. Morays are actually highly social, 
coming out of hiding to interact and feed mainly at night. We were lucky to find these two exploring the reef during the day. Their secretive, docile demeanor allows for closer observation than many would think possible. Jed, I know that apex predators are a specialty of yours, so being that close to eels must have been the highlight of your trip. It definitely was a highlight, but not the highlight. So you're saying you saw something even cooler than eels? Let's see it. Well, hold on now. Good things come to those that wait. Dude, you're killing me. Well, we haven't even got to the coolest resident at Honolulu Bay, the green sea turtle. Oh, of course, green sea turtles. They're an absolute icon of Hawaii. Whatever it is you're holding out on us can wait for Hanu. Did you know that green sea turtles can hold their breath for up to two hours? You can sometimes see them resting by wedging themselves under a rock. A good tip if you see a turtle coming to the surface is not to swim right above them. They may think you are a predator and avoid coming to the surface for a much needed breath of air. The Hawaiian green sea turtle, known locally as Hanu, is a symbol of wisdom and good luck. And you don't have to observe them for long to understand why. The green sea turtle is listed as threatened under both federal and Hawaii state law. So it's illegal to touch, feed, or restrict their movement in any way. But part of the wonder of being underwater with these majestic animals is that sometimes they choose to approach you. And when it happens, there are a few feelings that are truly as amazing. Wow, what an honor to have such a beautiful animal choose to approach you. And it's so important that visitors of the islands understand that it's the only way it can happen. Yeah, you can't go into the water with a plan to get close because disturbing them isn't just against federal and state law, it's also against the unwritten laws of the Hawaiian people. Jed, I remember Ho'okipa Beach on Maui being a very important nesting site for green turtles and the local people taking it very seriously protecting it. Absolutely. We went to that beach after we left Honolulu Bay and I was so impressed with the steps that were taken to protect such an important species. People are kept away from important nesting sites with signs and barriers and there's often someone watching just to make sure visitors don't break the rules. That's great because sea turtles are extremely vulnerable on land especially when laying eggs. Water is their habitat. They're in complete control while swimming, so it's considered a great honor when one chooses to approach you. But on land, they don't have that choice. Right, so if you're gonna visit Hawaii, it's vital that you respect all the rules, not just of the government, but of the people, because they're in place for a good reason. So Jed, are you ready to show us that apex predator that you've been making us wait to see? Almost! Just one more scuba diving adventure and a bit of advice to make your time underwater the best it can be. After once again consulting the friendly folks at our local dive shop, we took the plunge at Black Rock Beach, a perfect site for both advanced and beginner divers. Here we saw more turtles, eel, the iconic pufferfish, triggerfish, and more large schools of fish than we encountered elsewhere. As always, protecting the environments we explore is vital so that they can be enjoyed for generations to come. Never touch coral. Decades of growth can be broken off with a single impact. Large and quick movements should be kept to open water. When you arrive at your destination, it's time to be still, slow your breaths, and become one with the sea. When you allow the current to take you, it's amazing how quickly the animals accept you as part of their scenery. Is it time? It's time. Well, it's about time. Those of you who know me understand I have a passion for the most feared and misunderstood animal in all the world's oceans, sharks. Did you know that over 11,000 sharks are killed per hour? That's an estimated 100 million sharks killed by humans per year. These apex predators are an essential part of healthy ecosystems. If we don't change our ways, our oceans will be in trouble. I've had the honor of diving with white sharks off the coast of South Africa, Guadalupe, and the Fairlawn Islands. 
Those were life-changing experiences that required cages for my safety. Hawaii offers a different experience, but one that's just as memorable. Here at Black Rock, Maui, I happened upon this white tip reef shark resting in a cave. It knew I was there watching it and couldn't have cared less, hardly deserving of its fearsome reputation. Unfortunately, interactions like this are becoming less frequent by the day. Did you know there are only 10 deaths per year worldwide due to sharks? Compared to eight deaths per day in the United States alone from texting and driving. Jed, what can I say? This brings back so many great memories of me in Hawaii. I'm so glad you enjoy that place as much as I do. It truly was a fabulous trip, and we hope that any of you that get a chance to explore the islands, the wildlife, and the people have as much fun as we did. It's a one-of-a-kind place. Yeah, and another cool fact is the Hawaiian parrotfish scrapes algae to eat off of dead coral. Oh, I remember this one. So it takes that coral into its gut, which breaks down into smaller pieces. And Amelia, I know you think this one's funny. You want to finish it? Sure, I guess I can. <laughs> My goodness. The <laughs> parrotfish then excretes that into the ocean and it washes up on the beaches as sand. So? So the white sand beaches of Hawaii are all basically just parrotfish poop. <laughs> <laughs> I've known that for 32 years and I still find it hilarious. Oh, I have one other thing that I want to share. Can we please roll that triggerfish footage again? You mean this triggerfish? Yeah, that. It's a humu humu nuku nuku a pawa'a. A humu humu nuku what? A humu humu nuku nuku a pawa'a. Humu humu nuku nuku a pawa'a. Okay, we get it, but what does it mean? It's the Hawaiian state fish, and roughly translated, it means the fish with the pig-like snout. <laughs> it truly is an amazing fish, and another amazing thing about Maui. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next time here on Critter Ed TV, where fear becomes wonder, and wonder becomes passion. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you so much.